Hello and welcome to the Walk in Love podcast. I'm TJ. And I'm Brooke. And today we're going to talk about sadness and anger. Sign me up. Thanks for listening. Thank you for making us a part of your week. The Walk in Love podcast is a weekly conversation between Brooke and I as we talk about rhythms, emotions... Family, so you're not, you're faith, not gonna read it. You're just gonna... parenting. <laughs> I we thought you were gonna nail it. And sometimes cry. I felt confident. And then the confidence, I felt it crash yeah, violently. Hard. Uh, and we try to find language to live a more joy-filled life. So, rate my intro on the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> the confidence of your intro or the actual intro? Yeah, both. Both. Confidence <laughs> A plus. Actual. B minus. Confidence A plus. That that's that adds up for you. <laughs> um <laughs> as you know, we are sponsoring our own episodes this year mm-hmm. as a way you guys can support the podcast. And today's sponsor is our online courses. We mm-hmm. just launched three online courses. I launched I will be teaching two. Brooke will be teaching one. Um if you can guess which one's more popular in sales, you would probably <laughs> probably be easy for you. Hey, that's it's, not a fair comparison. It's not a fair. I'm just kidding. So Brooke is teaching one called Home Joy. Do you want to give them a little spiel about it? I can. Yeah. Um, I believe the tagline. Oh. See, now I'm nervous to read my... Your confidence is a B minus. To, to confi- oh, my... Yeah, for sure. I can look it up if you um, want. Is, go ahead. Are you going to look it up or no? Um, yeah. So the class is... Hope- oh, so you're vetoing the tag... You're, you're boarding the tagline. No, I'm waiting till you get it up. I'm ready. Go ahead. No, no. I want you to... I thought you were pulling it up for me to read. No, I'm pulling it up. So you can correct me and judge me in front of everyone. Awesome. Um, How the 10 tables have have turned. Um, It is about, I've I've blanked. I have no words (laughs) in my head right now. Learn is the first word. Go ahead. You read it, please. (laughs) Learn how to create rhythms, routines, and systems that support you, your family, and what matters most. Yeah. I don't feel like I need to explain it more than that right now. So that is... Uh, Brooks class, it'll be taught live uh, in a few weeks, maybe like a month, maybe two months. End of March. End of March. Um, and the reason we're doing them live, eventually we hope to have them as like just e-courses available, but the live element allows us to really zone in or hone in Both. on... Hone zone. Hone in the zone on, <laughs> you know, the questions that you guys have on particular topics where you, when you take an e-course and you're like, they someone says one line and you're like expand on that expand on that and then you just breeze by it and you're just like yeah Dah. yeah that's the one thing i really wanted to know um and so we're hoping that the live e the live courses and classes allow you guys to ask questions and get your specific questions answered so brooks is home joy i'm teaching two one i've already taught before called the t-shirt academy so if you want to start an online apparel business much like brooke and i do um i'll teach you everything i know mm-hmm. literally 17 years of experience yeah boiled down into five one hour and a one hour and a half ish classes and again taught live um last last time i taught it was so great people came with just so many questions and uh, a couple of them have launched collections now and they've gone much better than they originally expected nice so that was encouraging and then i'm teaching one called launch party which is uh just a way to launch e-commerce uh collections well so it's not so much apparel heavy it's just more of just like shopify e-commerce content that kind of thing Mm -hmm. Uh, so they're all available we'll link them in the show notes and if you are looking for any class like that it's a great way to support the podcast so nice how was your week my week you looked was, at the thing. Is it recording? I'm lo- I looked at the time. <laughs> How long did it take us to get the sponsors out is what I was looking at. Um, my Are week... You, a, you got something going on? You gotta, was, yeah, I got stuff to do later, babe. I can't sit here all day and chit-chat with you. Chit-chat, chit-chat. Oh, um, can I ahead. throw something on you? Sure. Just on the spot? Please do. So, I have, so last week, the sponsor was subscribers, Instagram subscribers. Yeah. Is there a number in your head of subscribers that would make us record one additional podcast episode a month. And then is there a number in your head for subscribers that would make us record two podcasts a week? There's no number for that right okay, now. Okay, no number for that. Because to me, that is unrelated to a subscriber no, number. That is a like life, life capacity yeah, okay. number. Um, How many subscribers? To do one extra One extra a month? episode a month. So you get 12 extra episodes a year. 
anyways, just think about it. I don't so know. Go subscribe. If we hit that number, we'll start doing it. I'll have to think about a number. <laughs> also, we are both, our whole family got sore throats this week. Mm-hmm. It feels like the whole island got sore throats this week. Uh, literally. <laughs> Almost everybody <laughs> I talked to. So if we sound a little. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Take your time. Do you, I want, do you have I, stuff going on I later? I nothing to do later. That's I just not want, true. You have a haircut. I just want to this time to be fully devoted to you. Okay. We'll hold hands the rest of the podcast. Why are your hands so warm? I'm, I hung this painting. <laughs> I've been doing stuff. <laughs> See those tripods? You think I they do. set up themselves? <laughs> Sweating over here. Uh, <laughs> um, why did you ask me? How was my week? So I was just giving people like, sorry if we're coughing and sound a little like. No. Death. Um, but I haven't felt sick. No, I actually feel okay. Energy wise, I feel great, which is really encouraging. It's just the sore throat and just like the stuffiness. Yeah. I think like everybody at the gym has it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're outside all playing. Well, Everyone they, at your gym too? or Yeah, same. At my <laughs> gym. They all feel the same way at my gym. My gym's like a really private secret gym. So you, yeah. I don't think you've ever heard of it. <laughs> my gym goes to another school. Also known as the living room. <laughs> <laughs> Got her. <laughs> I have a key card and everything. It's fine. Um, <laughs> no, I'm Better laugh- pay your dues. I'm, laugh- I'm laughing about that. I'm, ha- I'm also laughing about what I was about to say, <laughs> which is we were all outside playing. And then I realized, nope, it was all the neighborhood kids. And I was just sitting on the driveway watching. Yeah. But that I included myself <laughs> yeah. in the world out there playing and having a great time. Um, anyway, the one kid rides by on his bike and they're like, play with us. And he's like, I can't. My mom said, I can't. I'm sick. And he rolls by. And then the one kid turns to me and goes, aren't we all sick? <laughs> sort of like, what? Like, come play with us anyway. And it just was funny. <coughs> I was like, it's true. We are. So, <clears throat> unity. Um, so how- My week was good. I feel like... You're blacking out right now. Yes. I feel like... Which is kind of how I felt for the last week. Um, I got a lot of great stuff done. <laughs> I did things. I ate food. I... <laughs> <laughs> walked up and down the stairs many times. Wow. I don't know. I feel like it Do was you an tell emotional. tell stories for a living? Yeah. Just, you just <laughs> wait for my book deal, you guys. Brooke walked up the stairs. Dear book, how are you? It's me, Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter one. Chapter one. Book somehow and Brooke I'm, rhyme. Somehow, Let's be friends. Somehow I manage. <laughs> Everyone likes a person with gum. Uh, fact, though. <laughs> Fact. You know, my dad doesn't chew gum. I know. I can't <laughs> trust him. <laughs> I love him, but I definitely I can't, can't trust, trust him, him at mm-hmm. all. Just no trust on the table without. Yeah. Um, I have a friend who notices any. <laughs> Did they go to another school? <laughs> <laughs> no, we went to the same school. That's how we know each other. Uh, um, which is funny. We went to college together, and this is going to give it away to anybody who knows her, but that's fine. We went to college together, and then randomly, she lives here. And so I see her. Okay. Now. I know who that is. Yes, she's wonderful. But she, she, I, I don't even know if she's sh- n- not a gum chewer. I need to confirm this information. Okay. But what she is, is she's a noticer of gum chewers. And she'll say it. She'll be like, oh, so you chew gum. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yes. And then I'm like, was I chewing it loudly? Like oh, the I other love night, that person that's like the other night at Bunko, she was like, "Wow, six gum chewers here," and I was like, <laughs> "What is happening?" <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, all unite with the gum chewers for sure. And then Sammy and I bonded over how we both chew two pieces of gum because yeah. we're grown ups. We can do what we want. I know, but you know, disposable just, income. We got a garage fridge. <laughs> I can buy packs and packs of gum. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Is there anything that gum chewer? <laughs> I love that. I love that. Is there anything that you want to be known as? Like, oh, Brooks, oh, the Brooks person notices. that already knows. See, that's what I'm uh, saying. But, but here's the thing: you notice almost and everything. I notice a lot of things. It's it's both my curse <laughs> and my blessing. It makes me good at a lot of things, and it also makes me hate a lot of things. So it makes you real fun at sleepovers. Um, so, do I want to be known? Yeah. See, and that's what I'm saying. She's not like I hate gum. Therefore, I notice it. <laughs> she just is saying it out loud. I don't know, but I think I should try. Yeah. Oh. Well, you tie your shoes. Oh, I went for <laughs> shoes too. I was like, oh, so you wear flip flops. <laughs> Slippers. Yes. Um, wow. 
So I don't know. I feel like my week really was good. I got out of the house to work one of the, one day, which was nice. Um, I feel like, <coughs> yeah, we've been outside. I feel like a lot, and we've. I just. I feel like I don't feel like I don't have any extra the, extra the, information the, other than it was an emotional week for me, which probably ties into the time of the month. That's very real. Okay. What do you mean when you say emotion? Emotional. Like I was crying a lot and yep. it surprised me because I'm like, I don't internally feel as stressed or anxious or worried or insert whatever you want. Angry, sad, insert anything from these chapters. I, I'm not consciously feeling those things and therefore I'm crying. I'm not like holding it all in and now it's just tumbling over. I just had tears and then I was like, oh boy. Yeah, I feel like we it, had- I almost feel like I need to backpedal, not not in a like a, I shouldn't be crying. T tears are bad. Like, not like that. But just like my, the tears falling out of my face <laughs> are not equivalent. Oh, you got tears falling out of your face. Oh. So you so cry. You cry. Interesting. Interesting. Huh. Six criers here. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I felt like it was disproportionate to what was actually going on in life. And so then that was frustrating to me because I felt misunderstood, <laughs> which is always a thing for me. Go ahead. I cannot get over like I can be like oh you like gum I can understand that like that's just... not the statement <laughs> but noticing how many gum chewers are oh, in a specific it, area yes <laughs> and it's not the first time she's done it like it's multiple times I've I been with her so many questions and I think it's because I always chew gum and so she always points it out to me and then like somebody else will walk up oh you're chewing gum too <laughs> I'm like what is happening <laughs> I have to know more. Okay. Well, I keep telling her she can come over for dinner and we never make it happen. Okay. So um, that'll be our main topic of conversation. I feel like our week was good. I feel like our week, the you know, we're in this, we're in this early part of the year, <coughs> which I feel is always like a recalibration of the year. Starting fresh without starting over. Yes. And I feel like we are, we have more recalibrating to do this year than we have in the past years. In the, mm. in the name. Interesting, because I bet we would have said the same thing last year. Well, specifically in the work category. There you go. You know, where like the last two years of work have felt very like, oh, let's just try this. Or not even let's just try this. Let's let's do this, because this is all that, like if we can just do this, then that's enough. Well, we've said it's you been know, bare, like it's survival, been bare survival minimum bare, basics. And I think that the tension last year was like, I thought it wouldn't be. And so we talked about mm -hmm. that. And like, and so this year it's like, it's not going to be. And so the tension is like, how do we make sure that it's not? And so it's a lot of conversations about like projects right, and changes plans and, nothing changes. and rhythms and schedules and to do's and due dates and like things mm -hmm. that I think naturally carry a lot of weight in your emotions, mm -hmm. you know, where like you put it like for how driven and successful you are, you put like a, you all of a sudden, talking to me? I'm talking yeah. to you. Okay. All of a sudden, I attach a goal to something, like a trackable goal. Yes. And I feel like for you, that's like, uh, wait, what? Mm -hmm. That's not fair. Like, how do I know? What if it doesn't happen? Like, you instantly just start to like, yeah. what if I don't hit that date? Like, what, you know, and, and we're just like, well, let's set it so th there's an appropriate amount of time. And and so yeah. we, I feel like if you've been a fly in, the, on our office this week, you've been like, man, they're intense. <laughs> that's true. We've had a lot of, we've had a lot of intense it. conversations and not loud. Not nope, yelling, we don't yell. like, but are the if a kid was to walk in, they'd be like, "Are you guys okay?" Yeah, but because of the way don't break we up, were, guys, you're really good together. <laughs> don't break up, you guys. <laughs> um, and so I feel like that's where a lot of the emotions came from. Is just like we are, we are still talking about it, like still talking about the recalibration. Yeah. And then and I'm still like, of course like, we yeah, are. of course, and we'll talk about it all year because yeah, this year. We, we've kind of put the stake in the ground that like 2023, like it's going to be different mm -hmm. than 22 and 21. Mm -hmm. And so to make it different, we have to have different conversations. Yeah. And if we haven't had those conversations in a while, I feel like there's tension there, mm -hmm. not like bad, yelly, screamy tension, but there's tension. And so I think what we've gotten good at and like, honestly, what this book has helped with and just all the conversations have helped with is like, <laughs> you know, like Brooke, Brooke had a rough morning. I'll, I'll, I'll tell this quick story. Brooke had a rough morning. I was already at work. She was doing school. She came in and she kind of like, I don't want to say pooped on my parade, <laughs> but I, but I will. Unintentionally. Unintentionally. 
came in and like the energy just like instantly turned. It did not transition well from a hard school morning to letting that go. Yeah. Or whatever. And so and sitting down to work with like a fresh attitude. And so like it was just like like if I had a sound to describe the energy. We okay. Ha. <laughs> It was like this is the way the world works. <laughs> kind uh, of. No, it's kind of, it's more like this. Oh, and your cat's still dead. Yeah. Kind of like that energy. It was kind of like that. And um I was like and then you asked me, "Hey, I feel like I ruined your morning." I feel like <laughs> no, cuz you asked me a more specific question. It was like I feel like I've deflated you or something along those lines. And I, and I was able to be honest and be like, I mean, to yes, be honest, you did. You did. Yeah, but I can get over it. I we can move past this. We can have a conversation about it. Like, I didn't know your morning was super rough. I didn't know like, and and so I think what we're learning this January specifically, and I think the book, like, I think the Lord was like, "Hey, I'm gonna put this on your heart to share with the podcast because this is gonna be a nice refresher for the types of conversations that you're having and yeah. the type of January you're gonna have." And um, I just felt like we got through that conversation without like, I mean, you cried a little bit. Yeah. But it wasn't like you were crying because I was being mean. Or no, hurtful. no, no, no. Uh-uh. And so I just feel like I was, while intense conversations have happened, I'm proud of you and I for being able to have them with like soft hearts and openness yes. and like yeah. vulnerability, yeah. which has been really encouraging as I read this book because like if we want to le- live on the path, a full life, mm. we need to have a lot of vulnerability with the ones that we love and the people that are in our lives. And so yeah. I was just like, that part of the week was really good. Yeah. It was good. It was good. Um, before we get into talking about the book, do you have anything else you want to talk about? No. Do you have any strong feelings? I feel like this is what I need to get better at. I need a mm. system. Hey, I know somebody who's really good at systems. But- I need a system to capture all my strong feelings. Oh, interesting. It's almost like a digital note-taking system would just blow your mind. That feels like it would. Yeah. Huh. Mm. Interesting, interesting. Oh, well. Oh, before we get it... Anyways, I can't remember them. <laughs> but I need, a, I need a system for all my strong feelings. Not that I have. I'm not like a strong feeling person. I guess I am. Yeah, you are. But I'm not like... Own it. But I'm, they're not always angry. Like, and it's not like... It's like, you know, I hate roundabouts, specifically this one out here on, on at the end of our street where there was a beautiful light once time, then they shut down the street for yeah. a year, and now there is a roundabout that doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Here, here's the thing. They put the roundabout. There's going to be a new high school built across the main yeah. We were talking street. about this in the car last night, everybody. Okay. They're, They're mad. The, yeah. The people of Maui are mad. Very mad because yeah. the original idea was it's going to be a roundabout so traffic doesn't stop. But they're going to build a like a walkway for the kids to cross the street. Yes. It's going to be a bridge. Like above the Above cars. the cars walkway. Well, that got canceled, but they still went forward with the roundabout. Right. So now there's a crosswalk on a highway cutting through a fo- six-lane roundabout. It, it, you know, in a place where, like, we have people who aren't familiar with the roads. Like... You yes. know, tourists definitely don't like, you know, when you drive somewhere new, you might make a wrong turn or might not, might be distracted. Yeah, I mean, or there was like, an accident there last night yeah. and it's not even fully open. Yet. And, and so now they're talking about the school district busing kids across the roundabout because they're afraid that a kid's going to get hurt, which I would be too. Yep. So they're going to now have a van on, crossing the street on one side of the street, picking up kids, driving 30 feet. And dropping them off and then going back in the roundabout to do it again. Oh, my goodness. So that is government. I almost said in the car last night to everyone. At its finest. Yeah. Like, at what point will they close the road again and just rip it out and put a light in? Like, yeah. will they ever get there or will they just refuse and, and make people? Of, yeah. Like, the, just build the walkway. That would be the easiest fix. Right. But it's, yeah. yeah. So, anyways, anyway. I have strong feelings about roundabouts. Mm-hmm. But I do not like the inner, I do not let the interaction with a roundabout ruin my day. Right. Where I right, feel right. like there are people who have strong feelings and then it's like, that's all they can focus dunzo. on. They're done so yeah. for the rest of the day. I feel like I rage while I circle the roundabout and then I'm out of it and then I'm out of it emotionally. <laughs> Unless you get stuck in the roundabout. <laughs> Unless I get stuck life. in the roundabout of life <laughs> and then I feel like maybe I sit there too long. Um, so yeah, I need a note to taking system for my strong feelings. But as I was talking, I remembered something else that we can share. Oh. Um, we booked a 
600 person <laughs> venue for the Christmas extravaganza live. 2023. 2023. Mark it in your calendars. We moved it earlier. So hopefully those of you who want to travel from out of state can come December 15th in Lancaster, PA. Mm-hmm. Um, and tickets aren't on sale or anything because we're still working out the details because I hope, we hope mm-hmm. to make it bigger and better than ever. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's very exciting news. So December 15th, turn on your digit app, <laughs> travel to the Christmas extravaganza, butt clenchers unite, yeah. whatever you want to call it. And, you know, start tracking those flights, rent a car, find a friend, come. You might need to rent a car now. It's going to be, <laughs> just kidding. I actually, someone actually texted me a screenshot or messaged us a screenshot of their digit account. And it was the peach. Nice. That's the icon they picked. Clever, clever. <laughs> So December 15th, that's a date I want to just put in your guys' brains. Um, And then the other date I want to put in your guys' brains is July 8th, tentatively. Okay. We might be doing some sort of marriage workshop. Yeah. Not conference. It's a workshop. Workshop in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Mm -hmm. potentially with friends. Mm -hmm. It's going to be July 8th, so... Mark that in your calendars as well. That'll be pretty limited in terms of the space that we have. Yeah, that is not 600 people. <laughs> no. So do you think we can sell out a 600 person event? I have no idea. I'm a little scared that only like 100 people will come and it'll be like, oh, this feels very empty. Yeah. But, you know, that's okay. that's okay. Maybe we'll just say, bring all your friends if we don't get there. <laughs> we don't get there close enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So that's all the news. The other news is March 9th, Spring Collection is on its way. Mm. It's glorious. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Brooke. Hit him with the highlights of the book. Yeah. Um. Okay. So chapter five. We're on to sad. Um. It just makes me laugh that like you. It literally the book just, and says just sad, sad at the top. Um. I actually wanted to talk about the same thing you do. Are you? Do you want to read the thing about the water? No. Or do you, you have stuff before that? Go for it. This is your highlights, babe. Oh. Um. Okay, so he's talking about sadness and the gift of sadness, which I love that in every chapter he talks about the gift of insert whatever emotion we're feeling and like thinking about it like that. So not only is it a God-given emotion, it is a gift and we can use it as such. Um, So he is saying, hold on, let me skim down here. So a lot of people, like they don't, I feel like in society, we are as a culture, like we don't like when people are sad. Like, no. oh, get over it. Please stop. Like, don't cry over spilled milk. We have all these, you know, yeah. expressions that mean like kind of just get it together and get over it. Um, and he says, however, if we can't acknowledge how much what we've lost means to us, then sadness will deepen because we need to honor our losses with grief. Wait, we need to honor our losses with grief. Doesn't go away. That's not a proper sentence. Then sadness will deepen because the need, there we go. The need to honor our losses with grief doesn't go away. I was like, this does not make remember, any sense. I remember my first time reading. reading. Yeah. Many of us have heard that we need to disregard our losses and dismiss the pain of our hearts. People say, don't cry over spilled milk. That fire has already burned or that's water under the bridge. Have you ever wondered what happens to all the water after it passes, quote, under the bridge? In my own recovery of heart, I got off the bridge and walked along the riverbank, following the river to its end. I could hardly believe what I found. All that water from all those years that I thought had flowed to the ocean or evaporated had collected in a big pool at the base of a dam. Only so much water can flow under that bridge before the dam will crack and break from the strain. The danger isn't in releasing the water. The danger is in never releasing the water. And so... Oof. I love that yep. both as a visual image because he says in my recovery of heart, <coughs> I got off the bridge and walked along the river bank. Yeah. And so when I picture myself doing that somewhere yeah. and walking all the way down and then just seeing it all sitting there, that visual image is like super impactful to me. And I do think that like there are personalities, there are people who like naturally don't have a very high dam like Mm. uh, like and so there is like i I do feel like people are naturally like when they say oh it's water under the bridge i don't think that they're not feeling those feelings i think that they like can feel them quickly and like that water flows through more easily i do feel like there are people like that 
Yeah. And there's I do a th- range. Yeah. Of that and there's statement. a range of people. And so like, I think it'd be interesting for you and your conversations with your loved ones, spouses, friends, et cetera, to like kind of ask what type of person you are. Like, mm. do I have a giant dam or like, or like, am I, cause I feel like the people do that do that probably will like negate it over and over again. Like, no, mm. I'm fine. Like, I'm, that's not me. Mm hmm. Because that would be super helpful for those types of people who like have that, all that water that's just stored up down there, all that like (laughs) sadness and and pain to really take stock. And it's not like, and I feel like there's this element of culture right now that it's like dwell on that forever. Like whatever that sadness is, dwell on it and let it identify you. Like let like that. You know, like if you're a victim because of something that made you sad, then like, and that's not what I, that's, I don't think that's what he's talking about. No, no, no. I think he's talking about just feeling the full range of the heart that God has given you, the emotions that God has given you Mm -hmm. so that you can then see the goodness. Uh, Like, you know, because I think in the beginning, like one of my favorite things about the book is when he, uh, let me find it real quick. You know, hurt leads to healing. Loneliness moves us to intimacy. Sadness expresses value and honor. And so like Mm. if we acknowledge those things that have made us sad, we are expressing value and honor. Like the example that he uses later in the chapter is like, you know, people who don't shed a tear at a funeral. Like that's not strength. That's not strength. That's not some sort of like humble strength of character. It's a suppression of feeling sad like mm-hmm. you're you're let you're putting that wall that water is that those emotions are just sitting there yeah being blocked by the dam and it's not this like noble thing that our society has sort of made it like mm-hmm. oh, look how brave they are they didn't shed a single tear at their lo- like yeah you know like no you want to like we were created to feel those feelings yeah very deeply and in feeling those feelings like if you weep over someone you've lost that that's a way to honor the the impact they had on you, yeah. and 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 if you feel those feelings, like you know, we talk about Brooks, we talk about both our grand grandpas quite a bit, mm-hmm. um, and they're they've both passed away, and you know, like when we talk about them, I, I feel those emotions, like mm-hmm. I feel the tears well up in my eyes, I feel like that, you know, and and there's an element of us in culture right now that's like, don't feel that, like that's going to make everyone uncomfortable or that might make your wife uncomfortable or that might make people around you uncomfortable. And it's like, Mm -hmm. you know, and and June's like, are you crying? I'm Mm -hmm. like, well, yeah, a little bit. Like I'm, you know, we're talking about my grandpa and my papu or, you know, bro, you know, and then we get to share stories about them with our daughters. And it's like, we are because of the sadness being able to be felt, we are then honoring the memory of their lives and what they did to us. Yeah. Yeah, I like. I mean, sadness. Uh, read it again at the very beginning. You just close the page. Sadness, something. Sorry, my brain is like mush. No, it's not. I feel like it is though. Uh, let me see here. Ah, this is a brand new book. Should have my old book. Well worn. Sadness expresses value and honor. There we go. Value and honor, and I feel like. That's super accurate. I think that's crazy accurate and really true. What I think is a shame or a bummer or whatever is when we live in such a way that that only our sadness honors and values someone. Mm. Only when it's too late. Only when they're gone. Only when the relationship's ruined. Only when, you know, insert whatever yeah. scenario, that you then feel the sadness and realize, whoa, I actually really honor and value this. What I would love, and this is a challenge to me and to anybody, is like to live in a way where we, with our joy and our other emotions and our other things, we honor those people and those things that mean that to us. Like we value it on the front end. Yeah. Or, or throughout. Like I know, I know it's all mixed together, but. Yeah. And I think even in the first, like the second sentence of the chapter, you kind of expresses that it's both and Mm -hmm. sadness is the feeling that speaks to how much you value what is missed what is gone and what is lost it also speaks of how deeply you value what you love what you Mm -hmm. have and what you live and so there's an element of like yeah there is a way to really honor um 
people or lost dreams or whatever with sadness. Like it, it expresses that that had value. Like, yeah. you know, I'm sad over, you know, at one point I was sad because I wasn't the starting catcher for the Los <laughs> Angeles Dodgers, you know, but like that sadness has diminished. Yeah. Not totally. Good. I mean, there's Ooh. still a chance, a right? There. I haven't played baseball in 20 years, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like I still got it. <laughs> Put me on the field. Put me in coach. Um, and so it's like, that, 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 you know, that was a time in my life where I really valued baseball and wanted to play and, you know, it was a fifth grade or whatever. And so like, there's an element of like feeling that, that like, oh, that honors that kid that I was like, oh yes. you know, I'm yes. valuing who I've, as I've grown, who I've been and what yeah. I've been into. And so, and then there's like the sadness of like, you know, life is hard right now, or, mm. you know, I feel tired and, 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 and that means that you value your energy. Like I value the ability to yes. do what, you know, achieve my dreams or go after my goals or, you know, be able to go to the gym every day or like have dates with my kids or whatever. And, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm sad that those aren't happening now. And like that sort of like that, that there's two, you know, again, there's two sides of it. It's like what we've lost literally that will, you know, I think until eternity will never be realized. Mm -hmm. And then what we are missing out on in the moment mm. like because I definitely felt like and, and I've made it a priority it's put in the rhythm this year of like I'm going on dates every week with June and Sunny, mm -hmm. like at least at least three times a month right like they're they're definitely like with visitors and stuff sometimes there are weeks that like it just doesn't work because I was sad over last year that like I just didn't do it I wasn't yeah. making time for them one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. to look in their eyes and draw pictures with them and play card games with them and like you know so I did one this morning and it's like that sadness led to like an actual action to yes. then follow through and like experience the full life yeah which do you have anything else on sadness or can I connect that to anger um let me just see because I I think like I'll I'll end the 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 bit on sadness because I do feel like I have much more to say about anger, which maybe speaks to my <laughs> internals a little bit. As like I as someone who you know, if we want to use the enneagram, seven wing eight, mm -hmm. uh, has a natural propensity to ignore sadness or mm -hmm. not ignore it, drown it out yes. with distraction, mm -hmm. entertainment, noise. video games, noise, music. Etc. Actually, not music. I would. I mean, I'll speak on that in a little bit. I have found an extreme amount of life in acknowledging it. Like mm -hmm. even that conversation that we had this week, where you're like, I feel like I, you know, kind of pooped on your brain. I was like, Yeah, you did. Like in the past, I've been like, No, it's fine. Like it's fine. I'm fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm fine. fine. Everything's I'm not fine. Like, sad. I'm fine. It's a water under the bridge. Like I would use those phrases. Yeah. And so to for me to be able to like, Yeah, you did. Now let's talk. Like yeah, that created a better conversation, a more intimacy between us and, and actually a much more productive, <laughs> well-rounded day because yeah. I wasn't like holding on to this sadness. I really did let it flow through. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like I felt it, I acknowledged it and now it's gone. Yeah. Um, and I think there are things that take a lot more to like, you have to acknowledge them for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, and so as someone who naturally avoided this most of his life, and, and I think this is where, uh, like speaking to music specifically, like music allowed me to express my emotions in the, in the, in the types of music I've chosen, I've, I've listened to. And so there have been years of my life where like, I wasn't able to feel sadness. So I listened to sad music mm. and like, that was the connection that I like held on to is like, okay, mm. these guys are expressing or girls are expressing how I feel. And so that's why I'm drawn to this type of music. And so mm. I think there's an element of like, you, you can't again like one thing that's written on brooks wall right now is there's lots of ladder rungs and like i don't think you'll go from like i drown out all sadness with entertainment to like i feel it as deeply and i'm you know walking <laughs> down the banks of the water that's under the bridge and 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 acknowledge like and so there's yeah. an element of like if you feel like man this is this is hard for me or this is hard for my husband or this is hard for my wife like or this is hard for my friend like we like it, it will take tiny little bladder rungs yes, to, to climb, to, to feel sadness in a way that allows you to get on the path to full life. It will, it will take a lot of ladder rungs to like, again, if we go back to that picture of like the structure you build around your heart and if mm -hmm. sadness, probably for me, sadness 
is probably the one that was like boarded off the most. Mm. And so like it's taken years to like grab the crowbar and, and take the, the boards off the windows and open the windows and all that kind of stuff. But it's been time well spent because it's allowed me to one, become much softer person. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm able to feel sadness with people yeah. which I, before I would have just been like, Oh, I'm going to make you laugh because I want to cut the it. tension. Yeah. And it's like, I can sit and if I had done that my whole daughter's life, there would have been an element of mm -hmm. them that like it just horribly passed on a trait to them mm -hmm. that would have made them have a hard time dealing with their sadness. And yeah. so to be able to sit with my girls in their sadness and, and understand that and try to value what they're valuing has been has made me a softer hearted dad. Yeah. Um, and and so sometimes it's hard for me though, like, you know, <laughs> yesterday. <coughs> yesterday we're all sitting there for lunch. Brooks, I'm cutting up some of my lunch. The girl, June's sitting down for lunch. Sunny's sitting down for lunch. Abby and Brooke are talking. And all of a sudden, right by my head. Oh, yeah. A bird comes flying by my head. In the house. In the house, straight into the glass window. So I think one of our, our cats brought it in. It escaped and was like, I'm, I'm gonna, free. I'm going to escape out this window. Oh, and wait. Smashed. like, And so yeah, that affected Sunny. In such a, you know, the bird was kind of laying there. It was still alive. Yeah. I think it was like knocked itself out sort of. So like yeah. I got a box, I put it up in a, in a tree and was like, I think it's going to be okay. I don't know how true that is. Yeah. Um, but that affected Sunny in such a deep way. She yeah. was like worried that the bird wasn't breathing and that it was going to die. And she was mad at cheese and like, uh, or Mac. And there was like so many elements to that. And there would have been a time in the past where I've been like, all right, let's eat lunch. Like, yeah. get over it. And yeah. so it's like, but I was able to hug her and like be like I'm so sorry like hopefully the bird will be okay <laughs> and like you know <laughs> consider the sparrows like you know like like yeah. we can turn it into a moment of like actual heartfelt teaching to our kids yeah but, but only on if we're there first only if we're there first and only with the ca capacity to feel that in our own lives will we then be empathetic to feel it in our kids lives yeah and so I'll end with this um you know he's he kind of finishes the chapter uh, and then I highlighted this and I feel like I should put it on every door in my house. <laughs> Life is not a dress rehearsal for someday when it will become real. We are living our lives now, not practicing for a life to come. Mm. We need to be willing to value openly and have deep sadness. We need to write poems and songs. We need to send letters to our children at the occasions of their milestones, raise grandchildren to the stars for God to see... <laughs> hug our friends and tell them how much we love them. We need to take time to visit on the porch with someone who dropped by, visit old friends we've been meaning to see, get up early to listen to God's whisper, glorious things as the sun rises. We need to climb these heights and take on all kinds of journeys as a way to live. And we need to grieve deeply when people we love depart or when we, or when what we dream doesn't come true. <laughs> We cannot delight deeply in anything or anyone unless we are willing to walk in, in the world of sadness. Sadness allows the intimacy and impact of love to be much richer because it exposes the heart to its true ability to value and honor. So, yeah, it's a pretty good book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my two little takeaways from that is like, you know, I, we've heard we've all heard the phrase like life is not a dress rehearsal, you know. <laughs> And you're like, okay, okay. But to me... Said by someone going around a roundabout. That's yeah, exactly, like. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I feel like it's typically said in a way that implies what it literally means, like a dress rehearsal for like a, a play or a production yeah. or, you know, or something like that, where the, or a movie or whatever, where the yeah. final, where, where you're, you're aiming for that final take to be perfect. Yeah. Like and life is not a dress rehearsal. So do a stinking good job because right. you got one shot. And I, again, I do not what, miss your chance to blow. Well, off yes. <laughs> I get what he's saying. And I love where he unpacks that because that's what he's saying. He's like, it's not a dress rehearsal. This is our one shot, but here's what it should look like. Yeah. It's not this perfect straight line of like, and I feel like the dress rehearsal language is like a dress rehearsal is for something that's fake. Like your final shot practicing. is, is, I mean, acting is fake, plays are fake, musicals are fake. Like it's, mm. it's like a, it's a production. It's not something that's actual real. And so I feel like that language can sometimes make you feel like, okay, let me do the, like, let me get ready. It's not a dress rehearsal. So like, let me be on stage 
or the star of him. Like it can mm. be confusing. And so I agree that like he unpacks it in a way that like it's not even a it's not a dress rehearsal because it's not a play. It's not a movie. Right. It's your life. Yeah. Like it matters much more deeply than any film or production ever will. Right. And so step into it fully. And part of that stepping into it fully is experiencing that sadness. Yeah. All right. Yeah. On to anger. Anger. Um, Let's do it. <laughs> so I'm trying to, okay. this is, this is also a new book. I don't have anything highlighted in this book. Question, this isn't my book. Question for you about as you, you listen this week. Okay. As you listened, did you... Wait, are you talking to me? Yeah. Okay. Did you find one, like, do you find access to one easier than access to another? Between these Between two? Between these two specifically. Because well, my... I think as we feel all feel, feel all eight, there's definitely, like, we all, every individual can easierly access one. Easierly. Easy, more, more easily. More easily. More easily er. access... Let's just say this. If all your feelings are on the outside of a roundabout, yeah, some of us have an easier time getting off at certain exits. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm just always curious specifically about you when we've read, yeah, so, now that we've read two back to back, yeah, which one out of the two? Okay, and that's because I, I don't was, think they go together. It's not like, oh, you're either sad or you're angry. Like, mm, are you sure about that? Maybe. So I, which is where I'm, I'm, huh. Full Sorry. disclosure, I'm annoyed at myself that I don't have the uh, the uh, thing highlighted here that I want. He says somewhere, maybe you have it written down, okay. that like anger is what moves us to action. A or anger is like the tell that we're actually feeling something else. It is its own thing. He talks about that. But then that like most of us are angry because of insert something else. Uh, I'll find it at some Authentic point. Authentic anger is caring, feeling, telling us that something matters. In fact, the energy of compassion is rooted in anger. The desire to make the pain we feel and to see the desire to make the pain we feel and see come to an end. Mm. Anger exposes what we value and express our willingness to do what is required to reach that value. It allows us to stay with our values, take sides and even die for what we believe in. Mm, yeah. Is that what you meant? Uh, sort of. Yeah. You know, <laughs> anger creates movement. Yeah. Like it, 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 it is, it pushes us out of, into something else. And so you said like, when you were talking about the music, like, you know, it, or sorry, not the music talking about going on dates with the girls. Like it was in that sadness that I then changed it. I pushed out of it. Yeah. And like, that's where I was like, Oh, can I connect that to anger? Because I actually, if I'm super honest, which I hope in you the will last, be. I mean, I always am, but like in the last year, I would say that I actually connect more to the sadness and that I actually always probably have. Mm. But my sadness looks like anger. Mm. And I say that, like, oh, that makes me so mad. Oh, that makes me angry. Yeah. I say those words a lot. But there is, for me, so only speaking for myself, there is still a chair behind. I am angry because I'm actually hurt or I'm angry because I'm actually sad. Mm. It's not like I'm confusing them and, oh, I didn't realize I was sad in the first place. Like, it's not like a confusing thing. It's just that what I feel maybe one step up is the anger causing me to want to change something, to take action, to fix it. But if I just do that immediately without sometimes recognizing there is another thing connect, maybe it's not even behind it in a chair. It's just like, more like a Venn diagram. Right. Like my anger always has another circle going on mm. with it. And there's an overlap of those two for me. I think they're all overlapped to some Probably. degree. You know, yeah. I don't think we feel feelings uh, in like, you know, yeah. one lane. But roads. I'm not like an angry, ragey person in terms of like my conversations with people i don't have super hot takes i'm not like all well, i the think time. that's cultural's definition of anger and i that's I, what i'm I, saying i don't think that that's accurate right you know like i you know like the example that he uses and i've heard other people use this is like mother Teresa was a very like you know people like if you're familiar with the enneagram people would think oh mother Teresa is a two she was still so helpful. helpful you know this heart driven person and actually she was an eight you know, because she was angry because she was so, she was angry, so angry that angry people at the situation forgotten that she did something about it felt that these people were unlovable, that she was like, no, this, this, this drove her to action. 
and, and her so, action then was helpful. Yeah, and, but. It, and so I think like they, they do go hand in hand where it's like, oh, sadness allows me to understand what I value and then anger allows me to take what I value and make it like a, an yeah. element of my life. Yeah. Um, Because for me, I connected, I don't think it's surprised with anger more. Right. I, I feel like there's an element of just like, and, and I think that this allows you, I think anger really allows you to see what matters in your life. Like, People like, you know, like there's this sort of like shtick of life right now where it's like, just do what makes you do what you're passionate about. And, and for a lot of people, they, they're, they're speaking about that with business. Like, mm. oh, you're passionate about art, become an artist, like mm-hmm. do what you're passionate about. And, and, and there is some truth to that. Like, right. you know, but, but I think what anger does is it allows you to like find what God has put you on earth for. Mm. Like, Anger, I think like, you know, like I'll use Jeff and Jeremy as an example. Like they, 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 they are mad at the like disintegration of the family mm. and that has propelled them to start family teams and integrate it. And like yeah. that, that, that is anger that is fueling what they want to like, right. you know, but I would not describe them as angry no. people. Brian Zemer is another good example. Like one of yeah. the most cool collected guys I've ever experienced in my life, mm-hmm. but he was angry that men weren't learning how to be godly men Mm -hmm. and so he started men of iron and like that has become a you know yeah a champion for that issue and so (laughs) i I think what the anger thing really made me do and and kind of think about was like what what makes me mad and what like (laughs) let's actually think about it and take like take note of it in a positive way and i get mad when people have bad marriages Mm. when people aren't living full of joy yeah and when christ specifically when christians are like the most curmudgeon people that you meet. Grumpy, yeah. And, and so you you put all that together and I'm like, well, let's give them reminders they can wear to yeah. s- literally not be Debbie Downers. Mm-hmm. Let's give them language they can use yeah. so that their relationships and their marriage and their, their relationships with their kids and everything can flourish. And because of that, there will be more joy in this world. And so yeah. like w- anger is the reason that walk in love exists. Mm. Anger is the reason that the podcast exists. And, yeah. and so I think there's an element of like, squash your anger. Don't be mad. Don't be. And, and, yeah, and anger and, needs a rebrand. And <laughs> anger should not allow you to hurt people. Correct. Anger, like positive, full life anger should propel you to action. Yes. To make wrong things right. Mm. To, to bring light to the darkness. Yeah. And so that is the, that is what I like. I was like, yeah, this is so good. Like I was, I was pumped <laughs> about anger. Yeah. And, and uh-huh. I don't know if I would have been pumped about anger two <laughs> years ago. And so I'm reading this last night. Um, I, I broke out a Bible study. So she left. I put the kids, the girls down and, uh, Sunny just was not having it. She was just in, like, just full, not full rage, but she was just like mad. She yeah. didn't want to sleep in her bed. She wanted to sleep on the floor, but not, but like, she just was, Tired. Tired and frustrated and, you know, we have all a sore throat and stuff like that. And so I'm reading this, I'm reading this about like, you know, ang- these are like, <laughs> at the end, it's like angry people who are pure with their anger can be good company to keep. Moses was angry. Abraham Lincoln was angry. Martin Luther King Jr. was angry. And I'm like, Sonny is angry. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I honestly just like, I kept, and, I, and I've said this before, like we had a friend be like, one time randomly be like, the world needs passionate people when I was talking about Sonny's sort of like natural energy Fire. to like, yeah. But when I think about that energy well harnessed and that anger understood and like a passion, that mm. anger that leads to action. Right now, so much of the anger is just like reactionary, natural kid stuff. Kid yeah. stuff. But there's an element of Sunny that I feel like, man, she's going to be a fierce, mm-hmm. fierce woman in the in the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. And and so I don't want to squash this anger out to where it's like all damming up at the end of the of the lake i yeah. want to understand i want to give her language and tools so that when she feels that anger towards people not having good relationships or people not cho- choosing joy or whatever her passion is about helping the poor or the sick yeah. or the needy like i want that to be fully unleashed i don't want there to be any Things stopping that. I don't want yeah. her to be like, well, my dad kind of made me feel like I shouldn't be this way. Like yeah. I want her to hit the ground running full force. And so like that means her childhood is probably going to 
push me a little bit more. Mm, like yeah. I'm going to feel that more because again, it's a, it's, it's a, like I want to carry it with open hands. I want Sunny to fully step into God, who God created her to be. And I don't want to hold that back. Yeah. But I also want to like, let her know that like, can't be mad and hurt people. You <laughs> right, know, you can't right. throw all your stuff off your bed when you're upset. Like, and so it's this like gentle dance and balance. And like, we get this question a lot, like from people who are like, oh, I have enough, because we've talked about Sunny's athleticism because that's the word we use. Because again, I don't even want negative language around right. her natural fieriness. Yeah. Um, and, and people are like, what, what do you do? And, and honestly, like it's going to be a delicate dance for a lot of years. Yeah. Like, and, and, you're and, playing with fire in, in, in a non-negative way you know like, and like fire can do destruction but you know fire can also burn out all the the bad stuff and, 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 and allow yeah. new stuff to grow and so uh, I, I think that there's an element of like understanding anger and if you're not naturally like a super passionate person like our mm -hmm. middle child is but you have a kid that way, I think mm. that this chapter can be super helpful. Like I'm literally reading it as she's raging frustrated with me <laughs> about her sleeping arrangements. And yeah. I'm just like, I need to just remember that like fully realized with like an adult as an adult, this could be such an impact for the kingdom of God. Mm. And I don't want to squash that now over bedtime. Right. And that's hard. Yeah. Like it's I real hard. feel that tension and there are times yeah. where I 1000% get it wrong <laughs> and hopefully I get it right enough times that yeah. when she is an adult yeah she is passionate and the anger that she has is leading to something good and and holy in this world yeah so but I I just I, I like the anger chapter I don't remember reading it last time like I, I obviously huh. I've read it before but I felt like this time, and maybe it was literally the scenario that I was <laughs> experiencing in the moment. Yeah. Um, but I just like, man, it was it was impactful to me. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, really, the only thing I highlighted in the other book, <laughs> other version of the book, is just what I talked about. Is that like anger? I mean, it says here, anger creates identity. Anger is like a, it's gonna move us. It should move us. Yeah like true God-given anger, not impaired anger, not all the, yeah. you know. And he goes into like self-pity and depression and, and there's some really great stuff on that. Yeah. Um, but it's just interesting, like, you know, you're you're about to teach this class on systems mm -hmm. and like, and, and for so many years, you kind of talked yourself out of this type of stuff because like, oh, it's silly, like people don't need that, like, or whatever. And like, but that is, when you burn bright, it's because... Things aren't in my own home. In your own I'm home. not on. I'm not burning bright on behalf of no. other people. When you burn bright, it's like because things aren't in their place, or like I can't this, find something, or the system didn't make this easier, or the diaper bag wasn't packed at the right time instead of on the go, and like, <laughs> and so that anger has showed you what like you, what you're passionate about, yeah. and like, it's organization, it's systems, it's rhythms, it's routines, mm -hmm. and like. Now that has led to this class. Well, first it led to like a lot of conversations with just friends where you just like, it's led to podcast conversations where you're sharing your template and doing all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Now it's led to this class and this class will then hopefully, and I think it will help people at certain pain points in their lives. And mm -hmm. so like when you go back and you, and, you, and so let, let's say you have a mom who takes this class and like it makes bedtime just easier. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, it helps bedtime 50%. Right. So now for the next year, bedtime is 50% better. You go back to how is this woman's bedtime 50% better? Mm -hmm. It's because Brooke was angry about the rhythms and routines mm. and systems in her life. Yeah. And in so my like, own life. Yeah. That trajectory is incredible. Yeah. And that started with anger. Right. And so for those of you listening who are angry about something. Or it started with what I would label as frustration. Yeah. And then that's where you're like, okay, frustration is not one of the eight. Yeah. Back it up. It's anger. Yeah. We use a lot of other words yeah. for every emotion ever, yeah. but like, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's like, yeah, you weren't frustrated because you were sad. You weren't frustrated because you were hurt. No. You were frustrated because you burned. This with should a, be better. A thousand suns. <laughs> you burned. Yeah, with the intensity. Could of be better suns. since they should be. And so could be better. And so now that has led that will lead to other people's lives being better. And so mm -hmm. like that is, to me is so cool. And it's, so yeah, it's pretty crazy that anger can do that. So don't. And is made to do that. Yeah. And so like, I would honestly make a list. What makes me mad in the purest sense of that? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that will help you get an idea of like, 
hey, this is what I'm passionate about. This is what I want to do. This even if I it's care not, about. even yeah. if it's not for a job or a career, like this is just something that like obviously matters to me. So I want mm. it incorporated in my life in some way. Mm. And so hopefully that helps. Yeah, I love that. Well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you got to sneeze, cough. Oh, something. Who knows? Uh, thank you guys so much for listening and making the Walk on the Podcast a part of your week. As always, we give away one t-shirt a week. All you have to do is share the something about the podcast on your story. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you want to watch on YouTube, you can share the YouTube link. We have a new set, mm-hmm. you, you could say. Really, we just moved the table into a different room <laughs> um, because I was angry <laughs> about having to set up and tear down gear. Yeah. And it propelled me to make change, to make some decisions. <laughs> um, but because of that, hopefully I will, I will, no, not hopefully I will be able to share many more clips to the walk and love podcast cast Instagram, which will give you something to share. If you're like, I don't know what to share. Just yeah. share one of those tag us, uh, tag at walk and love. I mean, you can tag the podcast too, but tag both tag both. Um, and one of you will send one of you a free shirt. Cool. Like we do every week. <laughs> Anything else? No, I don't think okay. so. Thanks for listening. Thanks for making us a part of your week. Okay. okay I, I love, love you. Bye. bye.